Hello everyone, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to the short tutorial series on how to make an API. So for this tutorial series, we're going to be setting up an API with Laravel and I'm going to show you how to make your API RESTful. So we're going to be storing some information into a database. We're also going to be fetching information from a database and uh, just showing that to the user. So you're going to learn the basics of setting up a uh, RESTful API, but for now, uh, before we get started, you're going to need to download and install some software to your computer. So I use this program called Postman, which allows you to test any API routes on your computer. So go ahead and download and install this. It's available for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, so it doesn't really matter what operating system you're on. But uh, once that's downloaded, you should have an application that looks like this. And from here, you can put in a URL and send either a GET, POST, PUT, or DELETE request and these are all the types of requests that we need for a uh, RESTful API. So once this is downloaded and installed, the next thing you wanna do is set up your new Laravel application. So I'm gonna go over to the terminal here and I'm using Laravel Valet on my computer, but uh, if you're using Laravel Homestead, this process might be a little bit different for you. Anyway, let's create a new Laravel application and I'm gonna call this People Finder. And uh, this is going to just start crafting my application. Uh, so I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so it looks like that's done. Um, and it is worth noting that if you don't know how to download and set up Laravel on your computer, I do have uh, tutorials on that. So just go ahead, check out my channel. There are other videos on setting up Laravel. Uh, so now let's uh, CD into People Finder. And because I'm using Laravel Valet, I'm just going to Valet link this and that's going to ask me for my password. But once I've done this, I should now be able to visit uh, the uh, peoplefinder.test in my uh, browser. So let's go back over to my browser over here and let's try visit uh, peoplefinder.test. And there we go, I now can see my new Laravel project. Uh, and now by default, whenever you set up a Laravel project, Laravel also creates some API or sets up API as a prefix for you. So if you visit slash API slash something over here, that will usually take you to your API, but right now we don't have any roots for that just yet. So if I visit this now, we are going to get a 404. So let's take a look at, uh, first of all, changing this. So I'm gonna uh, look at making our API a subdomain instead of a prefix uh, URL. And then I'm also going to take a look at uh, yeah, returning some information over here. So let's return some information first. Let's go back over to uh, PHP Storm. I'm gonna open my People Finder project over here. And if we take a look in app providers and root service provider, this is the root service provider that we use to create all of our roots in Laravel. So you'll notice that if we scroll slightly down um, in the file, we've got this uh, function here called map, and this is mapping all of our API routes. So if you ever wanna declare some new routes over here, uh, then you go ahead and just create a function for that. And then you, you also need to make these functions, which are slightly down the page over here. So the API function is over here. And this is just returning API as a prefix at the moment. And that's why when we visit slash API, we can actually visit our API, but I'm gonna look at changing this in just a second. The next thing we need to do is take a look under routes and API, and this is where all of our API routes will be. Uh, right now there is a route that Laravel set up by default, which is uh, uh, to get some users information, but we're not gonna be dealing with logging anybody in in this tutorial series, so this route isn't going to be very helpful. So I'm just gonna delete this, and let's take a look at setting up a route and this is just gonna be a get root. And whenever you visit uh, API slash person, I want to return a person's information. Uh, so let's create a function here for now, and we'll take a look at moving this over to a co controller uh, later in the series. But for now, this is just going to return some information. So let's return uh, a person. And by default, whenever you return a variable in Laravel, it always returns the variable as JSON. So let's create this person variable now. Um, so let's create a person, and I'm just gonna set this equal to an array, and I'm gonna have a key here for 
the user's first name and uh, we can set their first name equal to Sean and I'll do the exact same thing here for uh, a last name and we'll set his last name equal to Puli, right? So now whenever we visit this route, uh, Laravel should always return Sean Puli in JSON format, which is the format that you want to set up whenever you're um, dealing with an API. So let's save this and then go back over to our browser. And if I visit peoplefinder.test uh, slash API slash person, we should always have uh, Sean Pooley returned as Jason. Now, if you don't uh, see this and you actually see something more like this, then you just need to install a JSON formatter into your browser and that'll allow you to pass JSON and see it um, and format that nice and neatly in the browser. Of course, I'm actually not going to be using the browser for this tutorial series. I'm going to be using Postman. So if we take this exact same route in Postman and we send a get request to that, uh, then we should have the exact same information returned over here. So you can see we've got uh, Sean Pooley returned as Jason. Or if we look at the raw version, that's what it looks like, right? So now let's take a look at actually setting this up. So we're not using a uh, prefixed URL, but we're actually using a subdomain. So quite often, whenever you set up an API, you're going to want that to be a subdomain. So you want this to be API dot whatever your domain is, uh, dot test slash uh, whatever information you're trying to get, right? So let's take a look at doing that. So if we go back over to our root service provider, and uh, let's change this from a prefix to a domain. Uh, now, of course, we need to change this value. So this is going to be api.peoplefinder.test as the domain. And whenever we visit this domain, we want our API routes to be returned. So that's exactly what this function is doing over here. And we're mapping that to this routes uh, roots api.php file, which is here, right? So if you ever want to set up like your own admin.peoplefinder.test or something like that, uh, you'd all you'd need to do is copy this function down and change which file that points to. Okay, so let's uh, save this now and let's go back over to uh, Postman and let's take a look at uh, if this URL actually works right now. So yeah. It seems like api.peoplefinder.test is actually working as a subdomain, which is great. But uh, better practice over here would be to not have hard-coded URLs in my uh, uh, Laravel functions. So the best thing to do here would to actually be to cut this out and to use an environment variable. And uh, this environment variable can be api underscore uh, domain. And just make sure I spell that right. Okay, so now seeing as we've set this up as an, env an environment variable, we can go over to our environment file and we can create an environment variable here called API domain and set that equal to the API that we want to use. In this case, api.peoplefinder.test. Okay, and by the way, this won't work without your URL over here. So you need to have that URL in. And that's why Laravel doesn't have API set up as a subdomain by default. Okay, so if we say, save this now and we uh, pop back over to Postman, this uh, should still work as a root. Uh, hopefully nothing's changed, nothing's broken. If something is broken, it's because you've done something wrong when setting up this environment variable. Because if that doesn't exist, um, yeah, we should have some errors over here. Okay, so let's go back and pop that back in. And now the next thing I wanna do is set up a database. So now that this is actually working, let's, instead of hard coding variables that are returned over here, we can take a look at um, setting up a database and getting information from the database instead. So in our environment file, I'm just gonna put in the correct database details here. And because I'm using uh, Laravel Valet, the database will be whatever I call my database. So let's call a database uh, people finder. Uh, username will be root and password will be blank. But if you were setting this up with Laravel Homestead, then you could probably just change your database name. And um, yeah, the username and password pro would probably still be Homestead and secret. 
Okay, so now that that has been set up, let's uh, move back over to the screen and I'm going to create a new database with SQL Pro. So I'm just going to add a database here and let's call this database people finder. So whatever I called it in the other file. So let's add add and refresh. And yes, I should now have a people finder database. Um, but right now this doesn't have any information in it. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at uh, populating this database with some fake information using Laravel Faker. And I'm going to end the video off here. So I'll see you guys next time. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, I'm going to assume that whatever I was teaching you now was helpful. So I just want to say, uh, if you did make it to the, this point of the video, subscribe and check me out on social media, especially Instagram. So all of my social media is on screen now, and I'll see you guys next time.